So I've run into a problem on my block wall. Almost died today. You know, it's one of those things where you'd rather ask for forgiveness than permission. I know Matthew! if I would have called. All right, Matt, tell everybody what you're doing here because I don't agree with this and I want you to explain to the folks at home what you're doing. I'm just the guy that if I see an animal in a cage, I have to buy it. What's up guys, welcome back. As you can see around us, we are pretty much halfway, just about halfway with our wall. We have been going hard cement blocking. Matt has been doing it all day. He's getting a hang of it. There's been some, <laughs> okay, he's not getting a hang of it. We're just making it through. We think it's gonna work out, but you never know. The real test of a block wall is obviously within time to see, is it gonna crack? Is it gonna a wall's wobble? A, lot, a wall's a lot like a relationship, you know? In the beginning, everything looks good, but maybe five <laughs> years down the road, you say, oh. You better take that back. You mean like 50 years. Starting right? to see some, starting to see a few cracks. I mean, if it lasts 50 years and starts cracking, that's a win. We'll call that a dub because you made it 50 years. So, you know, it's those four or five years. I might come out here and say, I hate this wall. It's hideous. And then, you know, people going to come by and see it and go, oh boy. Oh boy. So today we're getting right into it. Matt is able to rip it now. He knows what he's doing, at least what he's going to do. Maybe not exactly what's right. And he's going to rip it today. So let's get right into it. Let's do it. Before y'all say, Matt, I knew you couldn't mix that mud. You gave in, got yourself a mixer. A friend of mine here, Big Neil, the big homie in Puerto Rico, said, "Hey, I got a mixer that I don't use no more. That's just taking up room on my back porch. If you want to come grab it," he said, "It's well worn, but it still spins." So I said, "Hell yeah, I'll come get it." So we went out there, we got it, and it does help a lot with the mud because it's pretty hot here. So when I mix the mud and then I take it out and do all the things, it's basically dry by the time I get back and I really can only mix like a half a bag at a time. So this lets you do more mud, it stays wet, it's easier to keep consistent and has been helping me a ton with getting this block laid. So, you know, technology is here for a reason. Some of you might be questioning my fashion choice here. Basically there's a little nut bolt thing that holds the mixing arms on and that caught my shirt earlier and almost ripped it off. It almost rolled me around this thing and killed me. <laughs> so now I know what it feels like to be spaghetti when someone's twirling you up on a fork because almost died today.
does it feel to get that much done so far at the wall? Feels good. I'm pretty hyped. I'm gonna be halfway done by today, so you know it's going. It's starting to pick up a little bit. I'm starting to be able to get some done, and you know, I'm just trying to get the block wall as perfect as I can because I heard stucco's like the crazy part. So if I can get a nice straight flat surface, I think it'll help the further moors go further more. But knowing my luck, an earthquake will probably happen as soon as I'm done and make it all crooked anyhow. So that's what I'm gonna blame it. So y'all can. Just say, believe an earthquake's coming. At least I'm gonna say. All right, Matt, tell everybody what you're doing here because I don't agree with this and I want you to explain to the folks at home what you're doing. First of all, you're a liar that you don't agree with this. But... I don't agree with this. It's not the time. Okay, well, I'm on my third U-turn, so I don't know how I turned myself around three times to go do this. And I was getting full blown pushback the whole time. That's a bit of a hard sell, but we'll live in whatever reality you want to live in for today. What are you talking about? But anyway, our, we're driving home. It's a rainy day. I think maybe this is a rainy day hysteria decision, but we're driving home. We pass our favorite store, our favorite pet store, our, save, our favorite Centro de Agricola, and they always have different animals. It's where we got Juicy and Roxanne. One time we saw two peacocks there for sale that we didn't buy and we regretted it. And today we drove by and I saw in the cage a baby dwarf pygmy goat. I don't know if he's a baby or he's a tween. No, we're not sure if it's a pygmy either. Oh, I don't know. It's just but a, it's little, a small goat. dwarf. So I've seen this goat and a couple weeks ago, I lost a friend of mine, this, this guy. We were pretty close. Guy I used to train with, fight with. He was a nutcase. He was just one of those insane people that was so unapologetic. And we were training, and one time he crashed his motorcycle, like, into the wall of the gym that we were at. So we nicknamed this guy Crash. We had a ton of fights. Awesome kid. But he passed um, a couple weeks ago. It was really sad, you know. You don't meet too many, like, super cool people like him in life. So I knew at that moment I was gonna get a goat and the first billy goat that I got, I was gonna name him Crash in my dog's honor. So I seen this goat today, he called out to me and he just looked exactly like my dog Crash. So I gotta get this goat. I'm I've already him. said no, we're going on vacation in a week and we don't have a home for him, a house, a goat house. We don't have a house built. I could build him something real quick, a little shanty, but Kristen hates the shanties that I build. So we can put him in with the cats they'll bond for now and he's a goat he can live outside so i think we're going to be fine we're going to get him set up i know that i'm going to give this goat the best life that a goat could ever have the guy remembered me from the pet store or and the farm store and he even said he's like i'll give it to you cheaper because he remembers when i had to save frank the little chicken and i went like full on and would never let the chicken die so the guy knows i take good care of my aminals my aminals the aminals so he said, you know what, you can take it. I'll give it up to you for the low low. So this is my crash, this is my go. And when we were driving home, even though Kristen was saying no every five seconds, or knowing me, she kept throwing in tidbits about, well, it does say they have really good butter content and they're really great starter goats. And it's not a big goat that'll try to ram me down all the time. So, you know, she was saying hard no's, but then she was tweaking in my ear about, we can get We're just not ready. Better. It's not that I don't want him. Listen, you're never ready. You gotta just let life happen sometimes. Well, you hear it here first, folks. We weren't ready for the chickens either. This is Matt's doing. But the chickens forced us into having a really successful experience. You know, are they easy? No. The same thing with the kittens. They are thrust upon you, but you just gotta work harder. You just gotta get up a little earlier in the morning. Gotta clean up a little more cat dookie and you gotta get to work. So this is, this is life happening. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. You came with a leash. And we brought the leash. Look what you've done. You made me do it. That was not true. This is obviously you bought yourself a Christmas gift of a baby. This is my Christmas gift. Oh, he's a little boy. He likes his scritchies. I'm just a, I'm just the guy that if I see an animal in a cage, I have to buy it.
All right, guys, it's been the first night with our buddy Crash. We put him in our catio slash chicken mansion. And I was kind of worried about him with the cats because I thought maybe he was going to headbutt them and be angry, but it actually was the opposite. He's not angry, he's sweet. The cats were picking on him a little more than he was picking on them. Fat boy is real sweet, so he went up trying to rub on him. And he did kind of headbutt at Fat Boy a little bit, but they got to know each other after about two hours. They were all the best of friends. They slept together and they all woke up this morning, so now they're friends. But goats, this goat, anyway, I don't know anything about goats at all, but he's pretty chill. He's like, uh, you can just turn him loose and he don't, he's still right by you. And if you walk away too fast, he just goes, ah, and he like freaks out when you're not there. So. He's, he's cool. a big baby. Is yeah, he's basically cool that what way. And you can just put him on a leash if you don't want to pay attention to him for too much. But so far, day one of goat ownership, you know, went pretty well. <laughs> I'm sure this has trials and tribulations like everything else. But he's a sweet little underbite baby. Oh my goodness. How'd you get so sweet? But I've been asking him all day how he got so sweet. But he ain't told me nothing yet. But everything is going good. But even though it'd be fun to just to hang out and play with the goats and the kitties all day, we still got work to do. All right, so one problem I ran into with this project is that I have to get three different blocks from three different place, three different manufacturers. So the half block that I used are a, just a little bit bigger. They're like a legit 16th taller and wider. So that's been something I've been fighting with. And what it did on this wall was when I fill in the middle joints, it makes it super tight. So what I have to do is shave off just a little bit of one of the middle block to get it to fit in and I can have enough room for you know mud in the middle a mortar joint so the geniuses of the world have made a diamond blade for your circular saw so you can just take some old circular saw and rip that and it's supposed to work pretty well in the block I've never used it before the only diamond blade I've ever used was like with a giant chop saw cutting out concrete so I'm interested to see how this works they had two of them they had a fast and aggressive cut blade and then they have this one that says uh, smooth cutting. I think I'm going to save this one for pavers um, or something that needs to look a little bit better. But I got it just in case the other one didn't work. But the other one I think is going to work good just ripping through, trimming down some of these blocks just, just ever so subtly. So that's pretty smooth, it did a great job. I should have been wearing my glasses because it did knock some rocks around. So sorry, safety Steves, don't come for me. I know I should have worn it, um, but it did okay for this application. This doesn't have to be a beautiful cut. It is pretty smooth um, and I think that this is gonna work well and it's gonna save me a lot of time. Before I get the question, why'd you use those a regular half block? If you could have just cut these block and made them exactly the size you want, I would have had to make like 200 cuts to do all that and you know takes a while it would have taken me like a whole half a day just to cut the block which might not have been so bad though because i definitely lost two days going to fetch block at home depot so maybe next time i'll just cut them cut them myself The nightmare it's been really raining hard the past couple days so you get a little bit of dry weather in the morning but even in the morning it's been raining lately so you just dance between the raindrops sling the block that you can and my dad's been getting on to me because my dad will swear he built the block wall back in the 90s and he swears his first day he ran 120 block in an eight hour day now I don't know if that's true or not, but he's been giving me hell over this block wall. Cause I, truth be told, get about 80 to 90 on a good day. So 
I'm, I'm, I'm hurting out here with this rain. All right, y'all, so I've run into a problem on my block wall. Truth be told, I've run into a few problems, but I'm not gonna talk about them anymore. I'm done But the problem I have now is that the wall's gotten tall. And even though I'm the manliest, manly he-man, <laughs> reaching way up with a block with mud on it, trying to set it up fully over my head, it's really not possible for the strength and the straightness of the wall. I can't really see anything anymore, so I'm gonna have to build myself a small, platform like a small scaffolding that i can move um, and that way i'll be able to finish the upper layers finish the upper deckers and i'm about done i want to be done with this thing and i want this wall in the rear view mirror before christmas Looks like it works. Would I trust I my know. life on it? Probably not. Listen, I threw this thing together real quick because it's raining and I'm, like I said, I'm trying to get this job finished before Christmas. And uh, actually I'm trying to get it finished before New Year's now. So I'm trying to get this job finished before New Year's. So that, you know, being said, I didn't want to spend a bunch of time building a perfect box. So the ground is uneven. You know, I'm a sidewalk surfer. I, I, I can balance on this thing. But Kristen said, no one's ever going to watch our building channel again after watching that monstrosity and I said look we're just toenailing it in we're just solving a problem here everything ain't gotta be everything ain't gotta be perfect All right, our main wall is done. We still have to do the small wall on the other side of the gate, but that should go pretty fast, Matt said. So this is the height. I feel like it's pretty tall, but right now we need to move land to go in front of spot. So it's not gonna be as tall as it seems on one side, right? You think the height's good? I mean, I think the grade's not too far off, but it might come up a block or two. Basically we put a block in the ground in some spots a block underground so you like the height though i'm happy with it i feel like with a wall you can always go taller 
but yeah he has to go taller i said bro this is this is already super tall i feel like we're doing something weird here and we're trying to hide it it's not really that tall but you don't you know leave it you, down in the comments if you below, can guys, jump if you can, tall? if you can hop and see over it it really doesn't do much of its job but it's gonna work it's gonna be fine and we can always add to it later when the full thing is completed we could always do a tram we could do a couple of beams at the top we could do whatever we wanted to we could add a whole nother privacy fence on top of it if we really wanted to get buck wild and have a 20 foot this fence. is good enough but guys you're never going to believe what matt did after we got that new goat that we already were struggling to decide to get yesterday he went to the hardware store to get some stuff we're going to try to build a goat house he went to go get some supplies and he came back with what another goat another goat guys I think he's losing it. He didn't tell me he was going to do that. And so should I be mad, guys, or should I just be like, let him live his life? You got to let me live my life. He's losing it. I think he's losing it. I think he's impulsively <laughs> buying goats. The goat needed a friend. The little one was blah, blah, blah all the time. Anytime I wasn't an eye shot of him. But listen here. You hear any goats? No, because they're best friends. They're snuggled up. It's true. And they're chilling. But as, you know, most wives and fiancés have to do, you must question every single move that a man makes. So this is just something I should have known better than to get a goat. But I took, you know, it's one of those things where you'd rather ask for forgiveness than permission. I know Matthew. if I would have called and said, hey, you know, our goat seems really distressed. Goats are herd animals. I don't think we should have them alone, especially because we were going. This is like prior to Christmas right now. So we're going to be leaving for like two weeks of Christmas time. So I can't leave this goat alone for two weeks. He's going to be psychologically traumatized. So I said, you got to pull the bandaid off. You got to get the goat. We were going to build a boathouse, not a boathouse, a goat house. And if you got one goat, what's two goats? It's, no, it, it's the exact same thing. But I can tell you this. I got my ass cussed out over that one, boys. <laughs> you did. You did. That's Mama a, was not happy it about was the not, goats. I don't like surprises. Anyways, the goat is happy, so I do feel good about that. I love Lil Crashy, and we're getting to know Zebby is what we named her. She looks like a, she is black and white, so it's kind of like zebra. So we combined Debbie and zebra, and we got Zebby. The Zebby. <laughs> zebra. Well, it's going to be his baby mama. The guy that I bought it from said uh, that it was probably pregnant. Um, it looks kind of chunky to me, so it looks like it could be pregnant. And every other goat in that pen... Uh, was pregnant, visibly pregnant. So he said, yeah, the, they had a little white male in there that was getting at everybody. So this one I think is pregnant, but if it's not pregnant, Crash will take care of that in six months or so. Hopefully, hopefully it's not pregnant because it would not line up with our timeline of getting married next year. So you think she should go into labor while we're getting married? Possibly. Give us one more other thing to worry about. Oh, so God. hopefully it, she stays regular and um, crash, crash can run it up in her and then she can uh, have Crash's babies. Alright guys, thanks for watching, joining us on this crazy adventure with Matt's Impulse goat buying. And come back next week, see if we bought 100 more goats. Bye! Oh, check out our Patreon if you want to see real time updates. You would have known we already got our goat beforehand. You can see videos early and we'll see you guys next week. Bye!